Luke chapter number 2, and we'll begin reading in verse number 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And then here, the two verses from your morning devotion, if you get the text message from the pastor. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I will bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see, these, see this thing which has come to pass, and the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that, that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Now, we know what this chapter is. We know the story behind the chapter. But I've often heard these shepherds referred to as the example that God wasn't interested in just, you know, royalty, but also the shepherds. But see, Brother Aaron, God doesn't do anything without a reason. And so as I was reading this, it wasn't a good enough answer for me on why these shepherds. Right? There had to be more to it than just, well, these were shepherds and God wanted to show. I mean, God could have gone to Herod. He technically did. He sent the Magi by Herod's house to let him know, hey, the one that was prophesied about, he's been born. Because the Magi were studied enough. They knew, hey, that's a new star. And we know that something important had to have happened. The king must be here. Herod didn't like it. And it wasn't just as he said, well, we think that a king is born. Right? They certainly would have gone into explanation to tell Herod why in the world they had traveled so far and brought such expensive gifts. And they just stopped by Herod's house as a courtesy, saying, hey, uh, we know that you're the, you know, the one in charge around here. We just want to let you know we're passing through. We're not bringing an army or anything because these guys were pretty well. It may have been rulers of other countries. They're saying, we're just here to see the Messiah. Right? Well, what did Herod do? He got angry and slew a whole bunch of children. It's called the slaying of the innocents. Why? Because he didn't want to challenge to his throne. So it wasn't just that God didn't go to... He did. He sent a magi by that way. Right? So why do you shepherds? Keep in mind, outside of maybe an innkeeper's wife or outside of maybe a uh, handmaiden... What's, what's the word I'm looking for? A midwife that may have been in the town that night in Bethlehem. These might have been the first individuals other than Joseph and Mary that got to see Christ. May have been. Right? I mean, the innkeeper said, well, we don't have any room, but you could stay in the manger. He obviously had something. He said, I don't have anywhere else, but you can have what I do have. Right? People knocked the innkeeper. Wasn't that what the lad with the loaves and fishes said? Lord, I don't have much, but you can have what I do have. Right? He was sympathetic towards them. So maybe the innkeeper's wife, also sympathetic, said, hey, I've had a few kids before. Maybe we can go out there and help this lady. I don't know, but they were among the first, certainly. Okay, so why these shepherds? And really, these shepherds, we're not going to talk about the fact that Christ came. Glad he came. But see, these shepherds got to do in the flesh what each one of us, if we've got the right spirit, and if we've got the right desire and the right affection towards God, desire to have each and every day. They got to come face to face with God. And you don't just get to come face to face with God because God wanted to show that he cared about lesser people. Right? These were some of the first people that got to see the Son of God robed in flesh. These were people that found grace in the eyes of God. Well, why? So with the Lord's help this morning, we're going to teach on face to face with God. Why these shepherds? Well, these shepherds, for the same reason that people nowadays come face to face with God in the Word or face to face with God in fellowship in the Spirit or through prayer it's because these shepherds weren't just guys that were out in the middle of the field that night these shepherds had shown some devotion, some faithfulness some things 
towards God that God knew he could rely on these shepherds. They didn't earn it by any means. Nobody deserves to come face to face with God. It is appointed that one day every man will stand before God, but this isn't talking about being before God. Everything's before God. He's above everything. By, you know, by Him and through Him do all things consist. We're all before the Lord all the time. He's everywhere at once. He sees everything going on. But this is about that intimate, close, face-to-face -face supplication where you're just supping with the Lord. All you're doing is spending time with Him and all He wants to do is spend time with you. All right, well, what's the first thing? Well, first off, in verse number 8, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Well, what do we know about these shepherds? These shepherds know their responsibility and they do it. Not convenient to watch over sheep at night. During the daytime, it's easy. Well, you're going that way. You're going to make sure the sheep are going with you. It's not easy to watch over the sheep at night. And it says shepherds, plural. You know what that means? Each of them gave up a little bit of themselves. Generally, they would watch over the sheep in shifts. Well, you know what? You do a two-hour shift, the rest of us will sleep. When your two hours is up, come and get the next guy, then you can go to sleep. And they would take shifts. Okay, throughout the length of the night. But see, you've got a lot of responsibility if you're the only one awake and you're watching everybody else's sheep. But what, why these shepherds? Because these shepherds knew duty. They knew their responsibility. They didn't fall asleep on the job. Why would God have sent an angel to a bunch of shepherds that wouldn't have waken up? These men were good, for lack of a better term, watchdogs. If they heard something in the night, even though they may have been sound asleep, they were up because the sheep were at risk. Well, these shepherds, a whole lot like we find in New Testament church, they were fitly framed together and among themselves. They weren't competitors. One guy wasn't saying, well, you watch over your sheep, I'll watch over my sheep. No, they banded together. They said, what's mine is ours. They brought all of it to the table. One guy might have said, you know what, I've got a condition. Once I'm asleep, I'm asleep. Right, I can't wake up. Well, maybe he took an extra shift in the daytime. Maybe some of them said, well, you know what, I, I know how to build a fire pretty good. The other one said, well, you know what, I'm pretty good at making tents. They banded together. They individually came together, yoked up with one another, but they all knew what they had to do and they did it. These men were faithful. You want to know how I knew that? They still had sheep. If they weren't faithful, if they weren't diligent, if they didn't care about what their duty was, they wouldn't have had any sheep left. Sheep would have run off. Sheep would have been stolen by wolves. Right, so why these shepherds? Because God knew that he could trust these shepherds with the knowledge that his son had been born into the earth. How many other places do you see where angels went and delivered the news that Christ was born? I don't see it. How many different places in the Bible do you find that somebody from heaven was dispatched to tell the person on earth after Christ was born that the Son of God was born? I don't find it, but you know what the last verse we read this morning? In verse number 20? It says, And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Why did God choose these shepherds? Because God knew he could trust them to go tell other people. Not just because they were faithful, but because they were willing to go. And I mean, we can go in verse number 17. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. They received the message, but then they went and they told other people. How many times do we forget the message before we even get to the car? These guys did it abroad. That means, you know, they were grazing here for a little bit, and they moved the flock over here for a little bit, over here for a little bit. Because of their faithfulness, God knew that he could entrust them to continue to tell. They didn't forget. It didn't get old to them. Everywhere they met, or everywhere they went, everybody they met, all of it, the forefront, the thing in their mind was, the Son of God came. Here's everything that we saw. Here's everything that we heard. And because there were so many of them under Jewish law, if they all testified to the same thing, then they had, it was taken as fact. 
because there was more than one of them, because more than one of them testified to the same thing and all of their testimony was the same, that's why people accepted it. That's why people abroad marveled. Because, in verse number 20 again, and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things which they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. You want to know why these men got to come face to face with God? Because they knew a little bit about worship. They didn't learn how to worship once they got to the manger. They knew how to worship long before they ever got to the manger. And then on the way back, they didn't know what else to do. It's the middle of the night. And they're having themselves a shouting fit in the middle of a field somewhere. Neighbors may not have liked it, but it may have gotten their attention. They come out, what are y'all doing? Hey, you're not going to believe what we saw tonight. First off, there was one angel. Then there's a bunch of angels. Then they gave us directions. We went down there and we saw Jesus in a manger. Well, who's Jesus? That's the Son of God. The one that Isaiah said would come. The one that we were told where he was going to be born in Bethlehem, Judah. The one, you know, come, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That one. We saw him. Then there was a star over top of him. God rearranged the very heavens just to show that his son came. And then here's the thing, brother. That star, that moved. Not just moved from where it was or where God had it to where it was. Because the wise men, they showed up a few years after Jesus was born. And they knew he came because of the star in the sky. And he wasn't in Bethlehem for two years or else Herod would have killed him. They got up and they moved down. Why? Because that's what God told Joseph to do. But see, them shepherds are saying, you see that one? You go underneath that, you're going to find Christ. We don't have an account of how many people might have gone to see him. I don't know that anybody went to go see him. But the shepherds told him where they could find him. They received the word, but then they also spread it. It changed them, because I don't find them rejoicing when they're out in the middle of the field at night that night, but they were doing it. They may have been weary and well-doing, but when they got to Jesus, I guarantee you they didn't sleep the rest of that night, brother. Seals, what, why? Because they were just so full of God. They got face-to-face -face with the very Son of God in the flesh, and it blew their minds. But they gave praise and honor and glorified God because of it. They didn't keep it to themselves. They didn't say, look at what we found. They didn't find anything. God had to send the the messenger to tell them about it, then give them instructions on how to get there. And all they did was follow it. Which brings us to the next point. Why do you shepherds? Well, because if we go back, my page is stuck. If we go back, verse number 12, the angel says, and this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Then the angel shall, they start glorifying and praising God. Verse number 15, And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. They had a little bit of faith. They didn't decide that, well, we must have been dreaming. Or, you know, they had a little bit of knowledge of the things of God. We've already established that they went away worshiping. They knew how to worship God. Well, they knew a little bit about the things of God also. The word Bethlehem meant something to them because they were familiar with the Old Testament prophets. They knew a little bit about who it was that was in the manger. If they didn't, I'm pretty sure that God would have, through that angel, done a little bit of preaching to them and educate. But see, they received the word, but they believed it. Herod didn't care. Herod killed a whole bunch of innocents. Man children. Why? Because he was afraid that somebody was going to come and take his throne. What did these shepherds do? You know what? One, I believe that that angel was sent from God. Because we know that the devil can be transformed into an angel of light. They believed that one, that angel, from God. Two, I believe what the angel told us and that there's a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes laying in a manger. But three, I believe that that's the Son of God and we ought to go check it out. Now here's the thing. I don't know. In verse number eight, we see that they were in the same country. 
keeping watch over their fields by night. Doesn't say they were right next door. They were just somewhere around. In Bethlehem City, not a lot of fields that you can go grazing sheep in in a city. That's why it's a city and not a field. Well, what's that? It wasn't convenient for them in the middle of the night to pack up everything. I don't know if they brought the sheep. I don't know if they left the sheep. Doesn't say. But they went. Came with haste. I doubt they packed up everything. They probably just slipped their shoes on. Made themselves decent, because some of them might have been sleeping, and then they booked it. Why? Because they believed. Some people, some saved people, here week in and week out, from the Word of God, from the preaching behind the pulpit, from devotions, from everything that God can use, God's trying to tell them something, and they just don't believe it. God tries to say, hey, you need to let go of this in your life so you can get closer to me. I don't need to let go of that to get closer to God. Then they start convincing themselves that they're not arguing with God. They're arguing with the preacher. They're arguing with the person that wrote whatever it is that they're reading. They're arguing with the person that sang the song or wrote the song that they're listening to. All the while, it's the Holy Spirit trying to talk to us. These men had that faith that Christ talked about a childlike faith you can tell a kid if they trust you and they know you you can tell a kid anything that kid's going to believe it you can tell them that you know the sky's been blue their entire life but tomorrow the sky's going to be green and if they really trust you chances are they're going to go around and tell everybody else how the sky's going to be green tomorrow they're going to turn into chicken little sky is falling sky is falling why? Because they believe you. Unquestioningly. Without doubt. Well, why would they lie? They have never lied to me before. Well, these shepherds, they just they didn't start... Why would God send his son to be born in a manger? They didn't become a theologian all of a sudden and try and figure out why. They just said, hey, let's go check it out. God's robed in the flesh and laying over there. We're going to go get him. I'm going to go see him. They just believed. You know how rare it is to meet somebody that when you ask them, why'd you do that? Because the Holy Spirit told me to. That when nudged by the Holy Ghost, they just do it. Why'd you do that, Brother Mike? Because God told me to. Right? Why'd you go out of your way to go over there at the inconvenient hour when you were sleeping and you probably still had the crust in your eyes because you just got woke up in the middle of sleep by a bunch of angels singing? Why? Because God told us to. Why did you stay behind maybe to watch the sheep while the rest of the shepherds went? Because God told me to. Right? Why were you awake in the middle of the night in the first place? Because I was up. It wouldn't surprise me. Again, this is, you're not going to find this in the Bible. It wouldn't surprise I'm not saying that this was the case, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was the case that these shepherds, the one that was on watch, he might have just been praying and talking to God while he was up in the middle of the night. I don't know. But I do know that God knew that they would listen. That's why he sent it to him. Sent the angel. Because he knew that they would receive. Now it's the will of God that all should come to repentance. That all should hear and receive, but God also knows ahead of time who's going to receive it. How do you know? Because John saw us in glory over in Revelation. If God knows who's going to receive salvation, God certainly knows who's going to receive the message that he sends through his man at his church to his people. God knew that other people could have been another group of shepherds. They wouldn't have received. God knew that Herod wouldn't have received it. God knew that certainly the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, they wouldn't have received it. But you know who he knew would receive it? New shepherds. Why? Because they had more faith than most people. Not saying that they had great faith. But I am saying that they had enough faith to believe what the angels told them. Had enough faith to leave everything that they owned in haste to go and see the Lord instead. Which brings us to the last thing. Why these shepherds? Because seeing Christ meant more to them than everything else that they owned. You know what that tells me? 
their hearts were right with God long before the angels showed up. Just the very hint, just the very mention that the Son of God was lying in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. They left the sheep. Some of them, they may have ran barefoot. I don't know. Wasn't there. But the Bible says they made haste. In other words, they got up and they went real quick. In the middle of the night. Had they been to Bethlehem? I don't know, but I know they were close. And I know the angel gave them directions. They might have stubbed their toes a few times along the way, may have tripped over some things, may have run in through a, a bush or something, had a few thorns in it because they didn't see it. It was the middle of the night. But you know what I do know? They made it. Why? Because they were determined. They said and purposed in their heart, nothing's going to stand between me and that baby. Nothing's going to stand between me and seeing the one that the angels were sent from heaven to tell me about. Yet nowadays, how many things come between us and God? This was only their livelihood. Everything that they owned. How they were going to provide for their families for the next how, who knows how long of a time period. And what did they do? They junked it. Said, we want God. You know what Lot said? You know what? I bet I can make a good living down there in the plains of Jordan. The Bible says that, not me, the Bible said that the plains of Jordan were compared to the garden of God. That's how fruitful and bountiful they were. You know what that's saying? It was as rich and as luscious as the Garden of Eden. It made sense to the flesh. But you know what Abraham said? He'd say, I'd give it all up. If it meant getting closer to God. You don't believe me? He did lay Isaac down on the altar bound. Why? Because he said, God's more important. The book of Hebrews tells us, because he believed in his heart, that even if God... You know, a purpose for him to kill Isaac that God would have raised him up from the dead because he was promised to Abraham by Isaac. Abraham was willing to... That was only his heir. That's the one that's going to continue his legacy. That's the same thing these sheep were. That's how they were going to put food on the table next day and the day after that. That's how they might get the fabric to make the clothes that they were going to wear. That flock meant everything to them and they left it. You know, this did that. James, John, and Peter. The Lord said, follow me. What'd they do? They left Zebedee on the ship and they went. You know what Zacchaeus did? Wasn't concerned about all the money he had robbed from people over the years after he got right with God. He went and he gave it all back. You know what that tells me? I'm not worried about the things I used to be worried about. I'm worried about God now. God knew that these men cared more about him than they did about the flock or about even their family not very popular preaching nowadays but even their family the Bible says if you love son or daughter father or mother more you're not worthy of Christ they said you know, hey love y'all but I love God more that's why these men got to, become, got to come face to face with God but then Verse number 17 and 18. They went abroad, making known the things which were told unto them, the things that they had seen, and the things that they had heard. There wasn't anything special about these shepherds. I mean, it's true. These were just common people. They were shepherds. Shepherds that couldn't hire a servant to watch over the flock by night. They did it themselves. Well, maybe they were cheap, or maybe they just weren't that well off. Maybe they didn't trust their servant to watch over the flock. I don't know. But these were common people. Nothing special about it. You wouldn't have looked twice if you'd have seen this flock and all these shepherds out in the field. But you want to know what they could do? They could tell what they saw. They could tell what they heard. And they could tell, you know, what was told unto them. They could relay it. And see, these shepherds, they understood it well enough to tell it to other people. It doesn't take much to be able to tell somebody else. That means, I mean, really. they weren't explaining how the miraculous conception happened. They weren't explaining how God could walk into the womb of a virgin. No, they were just saying, hey, we found him, we saw him, because we heard about him, and then now we're telling you. We can go over to the book of Acts. After Peter and John were headed to the temple, and that lame man said, you know, hey, 
got any silver or gold? Peter said, nope. But what I have, I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. And then that guy went around jumping, leaping, disturbing everybody else's good time at the temple. It was supposed to be solemn and quiet. He's just worshiping God. Then the Pharisees take John and Peter into custody. And then what did they do? Well, first off, they put them on trial and they say, hey, why are you preaching about this Jesus? You know what Peter's response was? I've just told you what we've seen and what we've heard. We were just testifying about what we've witnessed. And again, under Jewish law, two witnesses testifying to the same thing. It was fact. They couldn't get them on telling them a lie because they both testified to the same thing. But you want to know why people that day, I mean, that man making a commotion, they were like, what did Peter and John do over there? Hey, how'd you heal that guy? Ah, I didn't do it. Jesus did it. Peter starts preaching to him. People start getting saved. Wasn't anything special in what they were saying. They were just faithful to tell what they had seen and what they had heard. Just like these shepherds. In fact, you go and you study the Bible. Anybody that God has ever used has the same qualities as these shepherds that we brought out. They were reverent. Right? They were submissive to the will of God. They were faithful to go and do. They were faithful enough to believe what was told unto them. They were entrusted with the things of God and they went out and did what God expected them to do with them. I believe that everywhere that they went, everybody that they came across, they told them about this story. Why? Because of the impact it had on them that night and because the Bible says they made it known abroad. You don't get abroad just by telling a few people. And they told it with such passion and conviction you could see in the very eyes that they believed what they were saying, that it was true. And those people went and told other people and other people and other people. Why these shepherds? Because God knew that he could rely on them and use them. Because in the shepherds' eyes, they were just a bunch of shepherds that didn't deserve for angels to come and tell them about the Son of God. In their eyes, they didn't deserve to be in the very manger where the Son of God was born. They didn't deserve to even see him, let alone to be entrusted with the story to go out and tell other people. Do you all understand that Luke's gospel. Luke was a physician. Paul referred to him as the beloved physician. But God turned him into a historian. You go and study out the book of Luke and the book of Acts. Luke's accounts were not made up of what he saw. He got it all from witnesses. First hand accounts. You know what that means? Luke ran into enough people that knew there's a bunch of shepherds that told us well, what did they tell you? Well, this is what they told us. And everybody that Luke talked to, hey, did you talk to the shepherds? Yeah, I talked to them. What did they tell you? And the story always matched up. Amen. Or else he wouldn't have been able to, under the law of the Jews, write it down as something that was true. It would have either been heresy because they were saying that God did something that God didn't do, or it would have just been a flat-out lie and the Pharisees would have come in and killed him. But everywhere that Luke went, asking, hey, how'd you all hear about Jesus being born? They'd say, well, probably about a year or two after, a couple of shepherds were in a field over there. They came in to buy some things in town. Next thing you know, they're having themselves a shouting fit in the middle of the town, talking about the night that they got to see Jesus right after he was born, laying in a manger. Some angels came and told them what the story always matched up. Always consistent. Amen. After time, after travel, whether they felt good or they didn't feel good, they always had the same story. We didn't deserve to see him, but we got to see him. Amen. We didn't deserve to hear from an angel, let alone to have an entire choir of angels show up, start singing to us about how good and how great God is. And then all of a sudden they were gone and we said, you know what? We could worship God for sending the angels, but I want to go see something better than angels. I want to go see the Son of God. Why these shepherds? Why did they get to come face to face with God? Why were they some of the first ones on earth?
If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.